word. Over here, bro, over here. Hey, no se mueva, no se mueva, no se mueva. Those who have lived it every day agree. The criminal cartels control everything that crosses the southwest border. The cartels certainly control the flows. It's the cartels who run the border, profiting big time off of smuggling contraband into the U.S., from drugs to knockoffs to now even eggs. But the smuggling that holds all this together is people. Rosannis and her one-year-old son, Jose, traveled to McAllen, Texas from Venezuela. It took four months to make it. I know of many who died along the way. Others were robbed, but we were fortunate that nothing bad happened to us. Years ago, the Rio Grande Valley was a busy spot for migrants, but not as much anymore. That's because the epicenter of the border has shifted to cities like Eagle Pass and El Paso, Texas, and Yuma, Arizona, where thousands cross every single day. This change didn't happen by accident. It's cartel driven. They adapt to um, where numbers can be increased, where they can decrease. Um, they do what, what is necessary in order to generate a profit. Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Patrol Council, says the cartels control where people go and when they cross. Typically, it's where law enforcement is most strapped for resources. When the crossings happen and Border Patrol agents get pulled to respond, that's when the contraband goes across. It's a synchronized effort. These transnational criminal organizations become very sophisticated, very complicated. You know, it's not what we see on TV right now. Victor Manjares says drug trafficking is nothing new. But what we're seeing today is different, especially because rapidly on the rise is the movement of fentanyl into the U.S. It's now the number one cause of overdose deaths. It also just so happens to be one of the most highly lucrative drugs the cartels move. Nearly 15,000 pounds were seized at the border last year. But law enforcement says that's just what they know about. And they're likely only stopping a small percentage of the drugs coming through, putting the total fentanyl market north of $6 billion annually. And that's just for one drug. The money is what gives these cartels a lot of power. Which is where Secretary Garcia Luna comes in. The former Mexican official who headed up the country's version of the FBI was supposed to take on the drug traffickers but is now standing trial in a New York courthouse accused of taking millions in bribes from the Sinaloa cartel, which operates south of Arizona. In turn, prosecutors contend Luna allowed that cartel, headed by El Chapo, to move large shipments of drugs into the U.S. If true, the man who was supposed to be an ally of the U.S. played them. But corruption at the border is hardly a one-way street. A study from San Diego State University analyzed 156 U.S. Customs and Border Protection employees convicted of corruption from 2004 to 2015. Over 70 percent were stationed at the southern border and the majority convicted on drug or immigration related charges. Officials say this is just how the cartels operate, all in the name of profits. Manjares believes it will only get worse. There is nothing right now that provides enough of a consequence to give a cart the cartels, you know, a, a pause for concern right now. It's, it's just not happening. It's just not there. Robert Sherman, uh, thank you for that report. After the break, thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.